The lightweight on the line, pound for pound, number one on the line. Let's do it. And the winner of UFC 281 is going to be Islam Makhachev. Drop this! And not only that, Mahashev is going to knock out Alexander Volkanovsky at round three at about four and a half minutes until the round ends. And if you want to check this out, this notebook will be available in the description below. After UFC 280 where Mahashev beat Oliveira, I wanted to figure out who is going to win, Volkanovsky or Mahashev for UFC 284. And I decided to use machine learning to help me do so. I went through the previous fights of both fighters for Volkanovsky and Mahashev. And I basically web scraped all of their own statistics, but also the statistics of each fighter. So, for example, this uh, Sarukian that he faced, the height and the weight, you got the age, you got the stance especially, and then you got different decisions here. So this is going to be the key of our model right here. And from that web scrape data, this is the kind of data I came up with. And so how this whole system works is you're going to give me 13 features of one fighter, such as the height, the weight, the reach, the stance, their age, and these are different, uh, you can look them up, but they're different like striking accuracies, takedown defense, their grappling statistics. All those 13 statistics of one fighter, 13 statistics of another fighter, and then also, and then from those from those 13 different features for one fighter and another fighter, the model's gonna output whether or not the fighter on the left is going to win. So the result, the fighter on the left is going to win, by using what method and also the round that it's going to happen and then the time that it'll happen as well. And from those different features, I did some pre-processing and you can read through all this. I scaled values, one hot encoding. And so you can think about it as, well, if it's 13 and 13, then you have a 26 dimensional vector, a 26 dimensional vector that the model is going to input and then it's going to output a four dimensional vector of those four unique columns right here. Before you start making any DraftKings sports bet with this model, there's two big issues that you should know. The first one is that these fighters professionally have only fought like 25, 26 fights, which obviously that's a lot of fights for a fighter, but for training a machine learning model, 50-ish data points is not gonna be enough to essentially give it or try to get meaning from it. So for example, I go to data, I'm only training on 25 fights in total, that's for Volkanovski and Mahashev. And I'm only, I'm basically only training it on half the fights they fought with. And the reason is because the, f the other half of the fights that they fought with are not official UFC fights. So if I were to go through and go through each of their opponents, then I'm not able to get the same statistics that are gonna be consistent. I'd basically have half missing values if I tried to tried to train it on all of their fights. I mean, who the fuck is that guy? And so this machine learning model is not able to reckon, not able to generalize super well. And that's also leads to the second issue. The second issue, if you scroll down here, for any for anyone who is a trained machine learning practitioner, you know an accuracy of a hundred percent is bad because that means our model has overfit so severely. And the F1 score kind of, the F1 score also reveals this given that it's a 0.45, which means it's also taking into account the precision and the recall, which both are probably gonna be very low if the accuracy is gonna be that high. And so our models are basically overfitting and using too much of the past fights to generalize into future fights. And we know the unpredictability of MMA is such that training a machine learning model on it is not going to necessarily give you an accurate prediction of the future because so many unpredictable things can happen that you can't like bake it. You can't really represent into the data itself. And that makes it very hard to do data science and perform machine learning predictions on it. And so what is this overfitting caused by? It's actually quite simple. Mahashev and Volkanovsky have only lost one fight. They have, he's 23 and one, 25 and one. They've only lost one fight. So we only have one data point of them losing. And I'm pretty sure for Volkanovsky, I wasn't able to even include it in this data set because it wasn't a UFC fight. 
So that means that this data set is so skewed to the point where you're only you're giving it so many examples of one thing and one little example of the fight that they lost. And that's just kind of the nature of, of, this, of the fighters. They're so good, it's hard to make predictions on them. I would imagine it's much easier to make predictions on fighters who have kind of a more balanced record. But that, that wouldn't be fun, you know? They're not, as, they're not as good fighters, though. Ultimately, this was a very fun machine learning experiment. I got to then web scrape my own data. I had to collect it, I had to pre-process it, I had to do all these, certain, all these things which you can read about in detail on this Kaggle notebook. The implications for this model show that we can use this for not only Volkanovsky and Mahachev, we can use the same model for any fighter we wanted to. You want to know who would win versus Khabib and Hamza, or you want to pair together Mahachev and Poirier, or anyone else that you can think of. This video is sponsored by absolutely nobody and some steaks with burgers, you know, it's like I'm very hungry. So am I. Thank you.